Hey, good morning. Welcome. Zechariah today, 12, verses 10 to 14. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me, whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son, and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. In that day there shall be a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning at Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. And the land shall mourn every family by itself, the family of the house of David by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Nathan by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Levi by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of Shimei by itself, and their wives by themselves, all the families that remain, every family by itself, and their wives by themselves. So God will pour out the spirit of grace and supplication on those that are willing to receive it, those that are ready and able to receive it. Remember how we talked in 10 verse 1 in Zechariah about pouring out the latter rain? Well, there's a spirit of grace and supplication, the same source and the same outcome. God wants to give us that grace. He wants to give us that spirit of, of seeking. He'll pour out this, this necessary spirit on them, and they'll look upon him whom they pierced. Now, who's that? Is that Zechariah or is that Jesus? Who is that? To the reader in Zechariah's day, this might have sounded kind of, kind of hard, you know, this... Uh, this one whom they've pierced. But if it's, maybe they took it as referring to God, God whom their sins had pierced, who they had, had, he'd, they had to go into exile because of their disobedience and all the sorrows that they'd inflicted upon God. I mean, you could see that even without looking to the Messiah to come, if they just looked at it that way, uh, that would be, that would make sense to them and maybe they thought of it that way. But we have the advantage also though of looking from, uh, from further, from further on we can go back and see the cross here between us and Zechariah. And so we can see that, that the one whom they pierced in, in, in the most literal way was Jesus. And Zechariah is looking to a time when those who have pierced him will repent. Repent, aggressively repent and, and turn to God. So the picture we see here is one of deep repentance. Individual families deeply repenting, the, the men and their wives, the people together. Uh, meeting together, repenting, all over the place, repenting, every family and the, the, all the pieces in that family. That's an interesting picture for us. And certainly when we think of the time after Jesus' crucifixion and how the people must have felt when they realized they crucified the Lord of glory, those who did realize it, you're talking about some pretty strong repentance and feelings of mourning and sadness. And when you and I, when we realize that our sins have caused the this death of the Son of God, we he, he did died on the cross in order to make a way for us that we, we could never make on our own. And so our sins have crucified Jesus. And that should lead us to deep repentance. So when you look upon Jesus, your sins having crucified him, uh, what will you think? When you realize how murderous, murderous you are at your core without God's help, and when you realize that, what, what will your reaction be? Perhaps you and I will be Oh, a deeply, deeply mourning as Zechariah and the ones that he's seeing in vision here. That should be our response. Deep contrition, deep sorrow. I mean, these words, we don't even use these words anymore, contrition. Um, but we should be very joyful that God in his mercy has seen fit to include us in eternity. Uh, we who deserve, didn't deserve eternity but through him we may have eternity. What a gift, what amazing uh, love God has for us. So we should be people who, uh, sure, we think we wanna think rationally and logically, carefully about the things in our world, the world views and how we relate to people. But I'll tell you what, we Christians should also be people of deep feeling, deep feeling. We've been saved from the pit of total destruction and we, we get, instead of total destruction, we get eternity in goodness. So, I mean, we should be rejoicing all the time. God bless you today.